Um, uh, I will mention at this point that uh, we did get the receive the resignation of um, Director Isaac Gonzalez due to other commitments. Um, so um, our quorum is now currently four, and we have three six. Em three empty seats. Three empty seats, I believe. We have four six. So that's good. Um, but we're working on that. So um, we can move on to uh, oral communications. Any person may address the board during oral communications. Um, and that's intended for items not listed on today's uh, consent or regular agenda. Is there anybody who'd like to address the board during oral communications? All right, seeing none, we can move on to uh, item number three, any late additions or uh, deletions to the uh, consent or regular agendas. Uh, is there anything that needs to be changed? Seeing none, we can move right along to the consent agenda, which is to approve the minutes of the board meeting um, of June 24th. Um, I believe there was a, a spelling change requested. Uh, it's fine. We can. Yes, my last name is spelled with only one N. Um, the future, but we didn't really need to correct that in the minutes. I don't think. Okay. In fact, I'll move approval. Uh, I'll second that. All right, we have a, a motion from Director Mannheim, a second from Vice Chair Rand. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? That carries unanimously. All right, now we can move on to uh, something that's very exciting, which is item number five, um, which is to accept uh, the report uh, from the Ad Hoc Strategic Planning Committee and adopt the strategic plan that they uh, came up with. Um, so I believe we have a presentation. Um, uh, did uh, Emeritus Board Member, uh, who's going to start with the presentation? Did, uh, Director, oh, uh, Director Mannheim will start. No, uh, no. Director ben former Director Benjamin. Director Emeritus Benjamin will begin. <coughs> Thank you so much for coming today and for serving on the uh, uh, committee. Would you like to come and sit here? Whatever the board would I, th I think it'd be nice. There's yeah. enough space here. Yeah. Please, you, you don't have to loom above us. <laughs> you have the tower. I had no intention of looming. <laughs> Enlightening. Blooming. We'll see about that. <laughs> Thank you uh, to the board. My name's Nathan Benjamin, as some of you may recall, and I'm formerly a board member uh, here at CTV. I was asked to participate in the Strategic uh, Planning Committee uh, around about January or so. So for about the last six uh, months or so, the committee has been meeting and uh, working on its report, which has been presented to the board. Um, I want to mention and thank the members of the committee because everybody involved put in a lot of time and effort and I hope that the report reflects that. Uh, Keith Gudger, Becca Reed, Matilda Rand, and Judy Owen uh, were also members, and Tom Mannheim, uh, were also members on the committee and we all worked hard and effectively, I think, together uh, under the board's direction to come up with a strategic plan for the continued operation and development and growth of community television of Santa Cruz County into the future. Um, we essentially wanted to look at what will it look like in the future if community television is to thrive and to succeed. And um, at the board's direction, we the committee met and drafted this plan, but I want to point out that we early on distinguished a strategic plan or a glimpse into the future from the action steps or techniques that would be necessary to fulfill that plan. And to be clear, what we attempted to come up with was what would it look like in the future and how would CTV thrive in the future, not necessarily uh, what are the particular action steps to get there or make that happen? So um, in an effort to map out that plan, the committee identified three primary areas, areas of focus, and this is reflected in the plan, uh, namely, uh, number one, strategic uh, or strengthening of the organization going forward, the relationships, for example, that would need to be uh, built upon in order to strengthen the organization going forward. And then, obviously, the operation of the channels um, 
that CTV operates going forward. And the third area of emphasis was building on technology use and skills uh, and bringing that technology and skills development out into the community. And again, this uh, plan provides what we hope is something of a uh, roadmap or, or a set of goals. And I think there is a separate set of discussions and perhaps a separate uh, committee uh, that the board, I would suggest, might appoint in order to discuss the specific action steps, the implementation steps or tactics that would be employed in order to reach these goals. But I believe uh, the strategic plan lays out those goals in a clear enough manner that anybody that the board might uh, appoint could gather together and formulate those action steps uh, moving forward. So that was our goal and I hope that the document reflects that we've uh, <clears throat> met a goal, uh, met that goal, and really that we met the vision uh, for CTV, which is to empower our community to thrive in a digital world. And that digital world obviously is upon us and happening ever more rapidly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I hope the plan that we laid out will be well received by the board. Thank you very much, Nathan. Um, uh, so I really appreciate uh, the putting all that time and effort into it and yes it, it is quite a, a meaty document um, so uh, I appreciate that you are here and director uh, Mannheim are going to present uh, it to we're us. All, we're all actually going to we, we've divided it up oh, into sections fantastic. so um, I'm going to start and then um, we'll work our way through the document. Um, as we start, I just want to remind the board that we did bring the mission and vision with some, uh, the vision is new and some minor changes to the mission to the board last week and, mm -hmm. pardon me, last month and the board did approve that. So a lot of that, those changes and this document work together because we really were trying, we realized as we went through it and talked about our priorities as an organization, that there could be some tweaking to the mission and vision. Um, which we did and then and then that really guided a lot of the work in terms of trying to prioritize uh, our strategic plan for the future. So I'm going to talk about um, strengthening the organization and the first section there, CTV must expand opportunities to generate unrestricted income. Um, so um, you're probably all aware of this, but a little background on sort of our financing I think is really helpful for this. Uh, all of our money comes from the city and county of uh, Santa Cruz. And that money comes from the cable franchise, actually I should correct that, not all of our money, but all of our capital dollars come from the city and county. Um, historically, it was all coming from the city and county, um, and we received that money uh, without any restrictions. The money that the city and county pays us to operate the channels is money that they receive from the cable companies in Santa Cruz County, um, and that money is essentially money that the cable companies pay for the right to use the public rights of way as they run their cables so that we can all get cable TV or internet service, whatever. Um, so the city and county gets franchise fees and then they get a separate fee called a PEG fee. PEG stands for Public Education and Government Access, um, and those are the three channels that we provide programming for. We operate those channels and provide that programming for those channels. Um, for, the, for the Comcast system, it's channels 25, 26, and 27. For Charter, it's 71, 72, and 73. There is a catch. Before July of 2014, um, all of the money we received from the county was unrestricted. We could use that to fund our capital expenditures, we could use that for salaries, for offices, for whatever. It was, it was both our operating and our capital expenditures. Um, that changed in, in July of 2014. Um, it changed because of some regulatory changes and some other changes that happened. We, the, we have been operating, or the county and city have been operating under a 
basically a settlement of a lawsuit that ended then. And so in July of 2014, we suddenly faced a situation where our dollars could only be used for capital dollars. So we can buy equipment, we can't pay salaries, we can't pay for office expenses, we can't pay for contracts with auditors or you know, maintenance, any of those things, which created, as you can imagine, quite a challenge for us. Did that settlement just sunset? Is that why the, that ended? The settlement sunsetted in 2014. Okay. And we actually, the organization knew that was coming for some time, but as you can imagine, it's quite an adjustment to make. Right, okay. Starting, so starting in 2015 as a solution to that, we partnered with the satellite telework centers um, to create a, the current facility we're in, which is the satellite co-working space and digital media center. Uh, the only one of its kind actually probably anywhere in the country. It's an interesting combination. The center not only rents shared <coughs> workspace and offices to local entrepreneurs and others in the community, but also provides a state-of-the-art digital media center that's available both to CTV members as well as videographers and other digital media creators. All of the revenue that that partnership creates provides our operating revenues. So um, that's the good news. I mean, the good news is that um, as opposed to where we were three or four years ago, we now are a stable organization with, with stable funding to, that funds both the operations through mm -hmm. our partnership and we continue to have the dollars that we get from the city and county for capital expenditures. The bad news is we don't expect it to provide enough revenue for CTV to expand its services. It's, we are where we need to be to provide the services that we currently provide. Those ser services that we currently provide are less than what we were able to provide back prior to 2014 when we had um, much, much more staff to help with productions, to go out and cover things in the community. So um, the upshot of all of that is that uh, we really need to find other sources of unrestricted income going forward. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matilda. Thank you, Tom, for a very clear explanation. I hope I can be as clear. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it can be assumed that uh, any time <coughs> there is a change there's also a change in the accountability and the way we need to collaborate with people within the community. And that's both maybe a burden, but at the same time, I believe it is a great um, benefit for all of us in the community. So um, we have to prove to the city and the county that we're worth to maintain this, this uh, collaboration with them to operate these three channels. But we also, it moves us to really reach out to the community and show them what we have, what we can do for them, and how we want to be accountable you know, to the uh, community. So we looked at several um, ways of developing and growing relationship with uh, different, different um, community organizations, and we think that is really critical for our future. So we discussed uh, nonprofits. Uh, we, um, you know, we provide them with opportunities to uh, highlight, to, to, to put a spotlight on them, and reaching out, you know, helping them to reach out to people who may benefit from them, but as well as, um, you know, maybe get more uh, potential uh, volunteers. Um, so that's one. The second one is, of course, educational institutions. Uh, we have on our board two uh, seeds reserved for education, one for K-12 and one for post-secondary. And uh, we are very proud of our equipment grant program where organizations, educational organizations, but also other nonprofits who work with youth uh, on video and uh, different media, they can apply for a grant uh, and then it's around a $50,000 grant where they get lots of equipment and um, can go and reach those, those youth to help them become media savvy. Uh, the third part, of course, are the government institutions. We uh, provide meeting coverage for the city, for the county, for several um, um, 
districts, special districts, uh, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District also. And um, we, we believe that it's um, you know, our mission to um, inform people about community issues using our, our channels because you know, it's really at the core of our, our mission. Then uh, we also looked at news organizations because we think we can amplify the work of local news organizations. There'll be opportunities to partner with them. And so this is kind of an exciting new avenue for us to, to reach out. And so um, we're going to um, try to reach out to them too. And then of course we can't forget about the private sector. You know, don't forget that they're a big part of our community. And um, when we you know, add uh, facilities and equipment, we, we must be, you know, remain aware of uh, their needs and how they can use uh, technology that we, we have and we require. So then I'm going to give it back to you, yeah. Tom. Yep. So um, oh. the next section is uh, increasing outreach to government liaisons. And um, <coughs> As I mentioned earlier, obviously all of the money we get comes from the city and county and all of the money they get, um, that comes to us at least, uh, comes from the cable companies. The cable companies have, um, both in California and um, nationally, have a very strong lobbying um, presence, both at the state and federal level. And um, PEG funds, the funds for public education and government access, reducing or eliminating those is frequently a target for them. So um, it behooves us to stay very um, aware of what's going on within that level, um, both at the state and federal level, and to engage when there are efforts to try to eliminate that funding. Um, CTV as an organization has limited ability to influence rulemaking at the FCC level or you know, legislation um, in Congress. We are members of the Alliance for Community Media, which is the um, association of PEG organizations around the country, but that is just one group and not the most influential group when it comes to these kinds of things. Cities and counties have much more influence. You've got the National League of Cities at the national level, the League of California Cities statewide, uh, there's an organization called the National Association of Telecommunication Officers. Is it NATO? NATO. NATOA. <laughs> no, not NATO. NATOA. National <laughs> Telecommunication <laughs> Officers <laughs> and Advisors. Yeah, NATO would be a different organization. Yeah, great NATO stand up. Um, <laughs> and those three organizations actually are fairly engaged both at the federal level and the state level watching <clears throat> out for these kinds of things. So we think it behooves us going forward to make sure that we are working closely with the city and county and uh, working with them um, to keep, make sure they're aware of any efforts that threaten our funding and um, that we can work together to oppose those efforts. And with that, I think it goes back to you, Matilda. But there will be others along the way here at some point. It feels like we're playing ping pong here. <laughs> uh, so in this, you know, this, <clears throat> this section is all about uh, strengthening the organization. So within that, we're talking about technical skills. And we realize that um, if we want to help the community become technically uh, savvy, we better make sure that we uh, know our own um, um, equipment and develop our own technical skills. So in order to do that, you know, for the latest and the newest technology, uh, we need to establish some um, collabor collaborative form. Right now we have the Volunteer Advisory Committee, committee and within that we have the programmer, program, what's it called, the director and producer, sorry, I'm, I'm talking uh, radio stuff right now, <laughs> <laughs> producers and directors uh, group and they do what we say here, uh, f you know, at a certain level is that we're, we join as a group we take on, for instance, there was this whole se segment on uh, green screen, and so a couple of people came <coughs> together, they, they developed some kind of curriculum, and uh, they set it up and they actually videotape it, and it will at some point be, be available. So that is an example of how we can work together and how we can have volunteers uh, come together and really study particular new technology and strengthen our, our own skills. 
Um, the other part, in order to have uh, volunteer leaders then, we need to recruit and develop them. And so uh, I think that is a very, uh, since we're really based on volunteer um, support, we need to develop that. At this point, we have volunteers uh, earn credits to do specific things for the organization, including you know, giving classes such as camera and, and audio classes, um, or uh, work as some of these people work here for, uh, for our board meeting on camera. So there's a number of areas uh, where we could develop more support. Uh, you know, on equipment maintenance, for instance, uh, equipment training, content production, and volunteer uh, recruitment and online services. So I'll, I'll, I'll highlight a few of them. I won't uh, mention all of them. But right now, for instance, with equipment maintenance, we have little capacity for maintenance. It used to be in the past when we had employees, they would take care of it. Um, so we are looking right now in volunteer leaders who will take on the maintenance and will develop a certain process on when equipment is failing, how it gets to be from sitting there failing, being looked at, either be um, disposed of or fixed or whatever, and bring it back into uh, the, um, the rotation. So there's a need for that, and I know that Keith has started uh, setting up part of that with the help of um, um, one of our volunteers. I know. I'm blanking on your name. Phil. 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 Phil Marvel. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <coughs> but anyway, Phil's done a great job, and he and Keith are working on that system. So <laughs> we, we already started with that. Training, um, we could have more online training. Mm. And I know that our, um, the leader of our uh, um, producers and directors, Lena Janakos, has already developed uh, with some other people some videos about specific uh, equipment, such as, for instance, the green screen. Mm. Um, and the way that it's set up here specifically, rather than general exactly, principles. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I mean, all will have to do with how we work here, because I think that's what people <coughs> want to know. Uh, then uh, we are talking about, and you'll hear some more about it later, so I won't say much about it, but uh, we're looking into more automation. And then, of course, it would be great, uh, since volunteers work with a lot of the equipment and, and the studio, that there would be input. Uh, so we're looking forward to set that up. Um, and then volunteer recruitment. You know, I think I mentioned that uh, it's an important part of our work, so we need uh, to recruit volunteers. But we can also think about um, more production support. Uh, we have in the, the volunteer advisory group a uh, couple of people who have developed uh, a possible way of doing that, and, but we're also are thinking of maybe expanding on what Keith and Karen have started, this is Spotlight. Uh, the spotlight on the electeds, where uh, Becca is our, our host, and uh, the spotlight on nonprofits. But we can come up with, or thinking of, other spotlights on specific things that yet to be developed, but could be done uh, regularly uh, established here. So um, I think I'll leave it at that. There's a couple more things, but I think that basically covers where we need to go with our um, empowering technical skills and recruiting and developing volunteer leaders. Mm. Okay. I think Becca is the next section. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So um, the next thing we're going to, we're, we're doing along this <laughs> line is looking into automation opportunities um, as we want to be the leaders in technology and we want to be disseminating leading technology, we should be using leading <laughs> technology. And some of, um, some of that has worked in the past for us, automation. There used to be, people used to bring their programs to us on how many formats and we would then, uh, poor Victor would have to change them and convert them over and we had to have a lot of different softwares to convert the various different formats into the final format that we need and then it still had to be uploaded and still has to be scheduled and, and um, now the automation is such that people can upload their own programs, they're automatically converted and um, they go into a place where uh, Victor can then schedule them. 
So our next uh, step is to get the scheduling automated if we can. We'd like to look into that. And also, um, the uh, we have a couple of um, volunteers who uh, manage all the people that want to make shows. And people call them when they want to do it and reserve their space. Like So it's a couple of human beings that Keith and, and his wife um, Karen do that work and they reserve the studios and they get the crews and they do all of that by hand, call, making phone calls and all of that and it would be great if we could find a way to automate that so that, not because um, it's great that that they do this for us but it's just a lot of work and if they ever decide they want to go on a vacation um, that everybody's on vacation because <laughs> no one can schedule anything. Mm -hmm. So it's a good <coughs> idea to to get them out of that loop. We want them to stay with CTV, but we don't want them to have to do that that task that needs to be done all the time. We can't depend on volunteers for it, or we shouldn't. We've been lucky to, we've been depending on it for about four years. <laughs> so we've got to do something else. And um, we also want to do some really interesting um, things in automation. It still takes about four to eight crew people to do a show, as you can see right now. This is a pretty simple show. There's four, yeah, I think there's six people here tonight. So that uh, is a lot of people to have to gather. And one of the things that might be a barrier to entry here is if people don't know the group and want to do something, they don't know who, how to get a group together to help them. They don't know they could they can ask Karen, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but it'd be better if we could maybe make it possible for those shows to be done with less people. So maybe they just need some key people and then the rest can be done automatically. So um, what's happening in a lot of the larger news stations and several community television stations is automated cameras. And I don't mean the little eh, eh, eh kind of things that hang from the ceiling, but um, real robots that move around the studio and um, get the shots. And they're really great. You can program them ahead of time with all the shots you want and the shots come up as an image on a touchpad and when you want that shot you touch the image and the camera goes. And so there's never a like <laughs> it's just it just goes there, it gets the shot, it's all very smooth. Uh, they're programmed not to run into each other or to hit a human. <laughs> So um, w I'm really excited to try that out in here. I think that'll be really fun. But I think better, I think it, it, in, it empowers us to enable people to learn the cutting edge studio procedure so they could go and get, um, especially our youth, younger, younger kids could go out and get jobs with that. Mm -hmm. that, that that's a really um, powerful thing. Although no <coughs> one's running the cameras, someone is running the robots. Mm -hmm. So it's a really uh, a good thing for us to be teaching and it really puts us as a leader. We'd be one of two that I know of studios that do that, that are community television studios. But further, uh, a step further than that is people being able to run their own show. They can be on the show and run it too, which mm -hmm. is kind of unbelievable, but you can do it. And people, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but you can do it. So if you didn't know anybody and you wanted to do a show, you could come here and you wouldn't have to do a lot of networking. Not that that's bad, <laughs> but you could do your own show all by yourself, which I think is really interesting. And I think that will put his head and shoulders above any, um, any, any level of distributing and sharing and being the technology leader. I think that would really be a good thing for us. Okay, and it would be I'm good for our, our team. I assume that uh, equipment is probably fairly costly, though, at this point. Yes, but we can afford it. Okay. Within our means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been saving up. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, we could do it. Okay. And we could, we could, if we wanted to, we could, well, <coughs> there's probably three levels, and we mm -hmm. would start out at one level, move to the next, move to the next. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, but basically, we'd start off with the studio, and then the last thing would be someone who could run their own show all by themselves. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, yeah, yeah. There are tiers, but it's doable for us. Mm. Um, and the other, um, well, I think that's it in this. Yeah. Yes. Let me make sure. No. So that's it in the in the area of automation. And now it's um, Keith Gudger will speak to us about the operation of the channels and more. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, that's a, an interesting. Title there and okay. more. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we talked about a lot of this already. I think it's clear that we have three distinct channels. Um, we talked about them being public education and government. We cover government meetings, um, which is really about allowing the, the citizens of this county to have access to their government. 
Yeah, that's a core part of our values, and that's the core thing that we do. Uh, but we also have um, a public access channel, and we've talked about that some. The public access channel allows anyone in this county to upload material to play on our channel. And we have a policy that anything anyone uploads plays at least once. So that's a key part of our public access policy. Um, we will, according to our strategic plan, we decided we would look for additional options <laughs> for streaming beyond just the internet and, and uh, our channels. So that's a, a strategy for the future. Moving on to the use and provide access to state-of-the-art equipment. Becca talked about some of the state-of-the-art equipment for automating cameras. Um, we have a responsibility to have the most up-to-date equipment we can have. Since we do have the funding, it sort of means that we have a responsibility to have the best and latest and greatest equipment, which we can then train members of our community to use the latest and greatest. And Becca touched on the fact that that's great for youth. They can pick up on what's, what's available and what they would find if they were out at a professional production facility. Um, and I think it's good for our volunteers, too. I think it helps draw in people to know that we have the latest and that they can get trained. But that brings it back to us. How do we get training for that? And we can get training for the staff, but it's going to be an interesting, and when we look at tactics, is how we bring in that state-of-the-art training for our volunteers as well. Mm. And again, I also think that's a draw, to have the great equipment and to have the training on how to use it. Um, and Becca, I'm sorry, Matilda mentioned the, the maintenance, and we're starting to look at ways to <coughs> improve the maintenance. Uh, because our contract prohibits us spending peg money for maintenance, uh -huh. which puts us in sort of a, a bizarre situation in that we can buy a new camera, but if it breaks, we can't do anything about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we don't like that. And what I, as part of the plan, I'm sure you read that we have been handling that with volunteers, finding equipment, getting it fixed getting it back in, and we've got a lot of equipment here that's gone way beyond what we might expect the life to be, just because we've had people who are willing to, to work on it. Mm. There's a number of us who like to tinker, so <laughs> it's, it's really been a good approach. But I think we need to formalize that, and we've talked some in this plan about different ways that we could formalize maintenance and disposal of equipment and replacement. And then the last section that I'm going to talk about is to provide quality and informative programming. And this, the committee spent a lot of time on talking about what does it mean to have quality programming and how do we provide that? Mm -hmm. And there is some controversy, but um, let's just talk about it a little bit. Uh, there's two parts of it. There's production standards for the equipment and how you do that, but there's also operating procedures and content. How do we get the best content and how do we make sure that it's presented in the best way? And again, that's more training that we would be really great for us to find a way tactically to bring in better training on how to do better standards for their productions. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's happened as we lost funding is we missed a lot of opportunities for quality program that could be of interest to our community. Mm -hmm. If we were able to get more funding through our efforts to bring in more funds to community TV, we have a number of areas that we identified that we would like to provide that kind of programming on our channel. Uh, the first one are community and electoral forums. And this idea sort of initiated the whole strategic plan process. We don't have an election this year, but we have a big election next year. And we would like to provide some form of coverage or, or forums or discussions that we weren't able to in the last election cycle. So that's sort of at the top of our list. Um, and then other civic events as well. Uh, high school sports programs came up. That's going to be addressed a little later. Uh, any other program of interest to community, candidate debates by nonpartisan organizations. And another idea is candidate statements. Right now, candidates get a written statement if they pay for it in the voter's guide, but we're also wondering if there is another way we can work with our county clerk to provide video statements mm -hmm. for uh, candidates. Mm -hmm. So that's just an area, some of the areas that we brought up strategically we'd like to address, and we're hoping that when we meet for the tactics that that can be addressed. Um, Matilda mentioned that we have the spotlights uh, for 
nonprofits and elected officials. We'd like to cover the arts and culture as well. And we're not really doing that. That's being covered by public access producers, and that's wonderful. We'd like to see more of that because, as we all know, Santa Cruz County is quite a magnet for artists. That would be a great thing. Um, and we mentioned the youth grant program for high school sporting events. And we would love to find a way to have the resources to do more outreach. Uh, listed in the plan are high schools, Cabrillo and UCSC. I mean, we've always tried to do that. We've limited success, <coughs> and we'd like to increase the amount of outreach, if possible. Um, and then, yeah, any other sporting events as well. We don't really carry sports on our channel. So that's it. Back to Becca. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I'm g going back to state-of-the-art <laughs> equipment. <laughs> we, um, state of the equipment, gal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we use uh, state-of-the-art equipment, and, and if we have it here, we want to probably train others. Oh, that's Keith. Actually, wait a minute. You're number D. You're D. D. Oh, that's good. No wonder. I, I thought that it. was not as familiar as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> not my subject. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wonder why are we going back? So um, one of the things we want to do with the equipment is facilitate the creation of content. And as Keith said, you know, that we get content in a few ways. And uh, uh, our real mission is to get people in the community to produce content about the community for the community. That's like the big thing. And uh, no one can really do it better. I mean, we don't, we're not exactly in the media shadow here, but we don't have, you know, there used to be a bureau for all the Salinas stations here, and there aren't anymore. So there aren't a lot of reporters in town doing news. I mean, we've got the newspaper, but we don't television news. So um, having people shine a spotlight on the things that interest them in the community or issues in the community that they find important in their neighborhood that maybe don't get out to the other neighborhoods and uh, things that they just are interested in is important and part of our mission. And um, we have been for a long time, part of the deal here is you come and you don't have to know anything and we train you and um, you know how to use our equipment and our studio and you can make programming. Um, we, that's a, it's a really interesting system here because there's nobody in charge of it. Volunteers run it themselves. It's run by, it's, um, there are, are a couple of leaders from the board, uh, Matilda Rand, our vice chair, and Keith, our um, board chair emeritus, run that um, themselves. So there's not like a paid staff member in charge of coordinating all this, it's volunteers. And, um, and they do a great job and they're passionate about it and it's wonderful. But that um, we're losing them over time. There's attrition and um, we haven't been able to replace them. So we need to come up with ways of training new, um, I think Matilda spoke about training new community leaders and that sort of the thing. We need to fill the pipeline with people like them coming up from behind and learning those skills and passing them on so that there's always a certain number, a certain level of trained people here who can teach and pass on the skills because we really can't um, we don't have a person, that we can't hire a person to do that. Mm. So it depends on volunteers, and volunteers really keep the place running. They do a lot of work here, and that's, a, that's our mission that they handle. So it's really important, and we wanna make sure it goes on, and we wanna certainly honor those who have been doing it, but I'm sure they'd like to pass the baton at some point. <laughs> so we need to get training, training more, and we're looking at ways to find people in the community who we might train to do this. And um, uh, we haven't identified anyone in particular. Um, we are outfitting a lot of um, um, high school students with gear, the same gear we have here. So they're learning, so they're, they're potential. Um, and we'd like to reach out to the universities too. And one possibility would be interns, but um, interns require supervision and management and you know they have to learn things and they've got to progress through a certain process and someone has to manage that. So. Um, we're not able to do that now, but that's something that we could do in the future. It's a strategic plan, so it's out there. We just have to keep our eye on it, keep our uh, eyes on what, how we might be able to make that happen, Tra uh, providing those training programs. And um, it's, been, it's, it's worked out great um, for the moment, so we want to do a better job of um, filling those classes and, and keeping those trainers going. Um, turn it back over to Keith. No, I'm next. Hmm. So on the third section, which uh, is called Building Technology Use and Technical Skills in the Community, we had a part of this that's an overview, which is what I'm going to address. And 
Uh, you know, our mission, a big part of it, is to provide tools and training. Um, what's happened in the last 30 years of CTV is the internet kind of <laughs> changed everything. Uh, people don't look at our channels as the primary access point to get their, their information to the community. They go to YouTube or several other options. So that's fundamentally altered our methods and our basically our relevance in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So there are some areas that we could provide some more um, information that would be useful to the community, it could be somewhat more curated. A couple that came up out of the plan were healthcare and education. I think those are areas that we think would be very useful. Um, and again, the, we said, the continued development and use of technology assets depends on a digitally literate population. And so again, that's part of our mission, is to make sure that we can train as many people to be digitally literate as possible. We have a, a hands-on hub here of technology. We need to find a way strategically to get that available to more people. And we list it, individual students, adults in our community. Ah. Um, so what we want to do is get that state-of-the-art equipment out into the community so people can use it and, uh, and learn to use it. And um, we've done a few things to do that. We've um, distributed a lot of um, equipment to um, schools, so that the schools that have video training, so that they can use that equipment and learn how to use it. And um, uh, because of our unique funding structure, um, we can continue to acquire really good digital media assets so that we can stay up to date, which is good. But um, keeping just keeping the equipment isn't really um, helpful if we can't get it into the hands of other organizations. So we'd like to push out that equipment to as many uh, people as we can. One way we're doing it is through leases. We can, um, venues who, ha who make, uh, like especially in covering the arts, venues who are doing um, uh, performances and that sort of thing, and uh, like fine arts performances can get equipment <coughs> from us and document all of those performances and those can come on our air and we can share them with the, um, with the residents here in Santa Cruz, which is a good way. And um, that's a, it's a uh, really great way to create content for us and the, the um, <coughs> that we are able to make that happen for those venues who might want to do it with really cutting edge equipment at a, a very affordable way. And so they don't have to put out a chunk of money in the beginning, but we take care of that. And then um, they, they pay us uh, a payment over five years and then they buy it all from us at the end for a dollar. So they can, and we've done one already and it's worked out really well and our, um, the venue really loves it and they're really excited to have done it. So we're kind of at, we've got a good, um, a good test case and so we think we can go on and do more of those. And you can imagine how many venues there are in Santa Cruz who do that sort of thing. We even now have a comedy club. <laughs> so right. there's like yeah. all kinds of opportunities yeah. I think for that. We just need time to explore them. Mm -hmm. And um, that also does, uh, it's a good thing for us because it brings us uh, more operating dollars and that's always a, a good thing. We're always looking for those. Just to be uh, yes. clear, those lease payments mm. then become unrestricted yeah. funds that mm -hmm. can be for operating. Yeah, right. we do it. It's a five-year lease, and by that time, that, that equipment is off our fixed asset list, and then it, we can do whatever we want to with so it. So you can use those initial funds for capital purchases, then convert them to the lease, and that becomes, yeah. so it's, it's passed through. Permit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's the ticket. Um, so uh, I was just about to thank you for that. Oops, That's my next paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was better. So, um, <laughs> and we also, we rent equipment too. And uh, we really want to build up that business because it's good for everybody. It's a, it's a way for us to um, help young uh, independent producers and production companies stay in business. Um, we don't compete with them. We don't do that kind of work, but we can provide them with very high-end gear so that they can compete. Their stuff is, their, their quality is very good because they have all the technology, but um, they don't have to buy it. They can just use ours and they can rent it for, we have crazy nonprofit rates, so people can rent the gear and, uh, and that helps them stay in business and helps them be competitive and, and it also helps the people in, um, 
in uh, Santa Cruz able to get uh, really good production from local people. And, and it keeps the locals who actually could afford to rent the gear from going to San Francisco or up on the peninsula to get it. So it's good, it's good for everybody. And we also um, can rent to businesses. And one of the things that um, we've done uh, is set up the RSVP, which is the really simple Visio place, which is a, a nice experiment in automation, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but um, businesses can go in there and by themselves at the touch of a button record a demonstration of a product that they have or messages that they want to put on their internet to the public or any kind of, uh, if they're doing YouTube marketing or something like that, they can do their messages, they can record um, presentations that they may want to give to staff, and it's really easy for them. So we, and we hope that more businesses will come to use that. And um, we also have all of our equipment, of course, is available to take out into the field so people can take it to their business and, and use it there. And um, we also, I think we've spoken about the youth grant program already. So I won't go over that again, but it, it's a, it's just a really good way of getting, we also get content from those students. We give them gear, as long as they have a teacher who knows the, who can teach best practices, that they really know their stuff, and as long as they have a place to keep it safe, then we put that equipment in the hands of the teachers, and, uh, and the students make um, programming, they have to curriculum, so they usually make some, some programming as they move through the units, so we usually get, um, program from them quarterly and it's a really it's good for us we get programming it's good for the students they they learn to make real things that can really go on television and you want so to just mention students. real briefly the high schools that have it yeah oh yes the high schools that have it are uh, Watsonville High School and Aptos. Uh, Aptos. Aptos Aptos I always want to say Harbor hmm. I don't know why but you caught and then me digital you digital which is a nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Aptos and um, and they they do um, really Great stuff, and we also have it at Digital Nest. It's not a high school, Which is a non -profit. it's a lot of nonprofit. It's a nonprofit organization where lots <coughs> of kids get get exposure. So it's really cool. Uh, okay, so um, the last part here is uh, providing training on state of the art technology. So. Um, we have several ways of doing that, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we can do internships, but uh, we're gonna, that'll be some time before we can do that because we'd have to have people who could teach the latest television uh, uh, procedures. So we would want kids not to walk in and be 10 years behind the times or something. We make sure that, and they need to be managed. And so we can't do that quite yet. Um, we really would like to make this be the place to, to uh, we should, just be the place in Santa Cruz to go and learn new technology. That's our goal. We want to have the best, the best here, and um, people should be able to come here and experiment. And you know, there's a giant organization in the Bay Area called Bayback, and they've been doing that for a long time. But they just teach software, so we have hardware, so much more fun. And uh, we want to be really. I would like people to think of us as if they want to learn a new piece of technology. We're hoping they'll think, oh well, I'll just go to CMAP or CTB and learn that. So um, uh, then we want to really partner and engage with the other nonprofits in the area. We really we think that it's a way to leverage um, a big network. So if we can engage the other nonprofits, if we can be the convener and get all the nonprofits in a group, and then we can we can use um, we can distribute um, these tools and training through them. We can really reach out to a broader area of the community, so that we can we can use them to to help inform and to bring students and interns and volunteers to us, and then they can support those organizations that they work with, and um, and support their uh, their constituents and and. Uh, fans as well. So uh, we're hoping this year, that's our, our big push, will be to try to get together with all the nonprofits, explain to them what we have and how we, they could use it and how their, their users can use it. I think that takes us to concluding comments. From Nathan. Thank you. So all of what's been uh, discussed here, which is a part of the strategic plan that's been developed, really illuminates the CTV vision, which is empowering our community to thrive in a digital world. And each of these uh, uh, topics that we've addressed are a way of achieving that vision. 
this strategic plan outline is intended to be a, a glimpse into how this organization survives into the future, how it thrives into the future. Again, as we said at the outset, this is not intended to be the specific action steps or techniques uh, for getting there. This is not a discussion of the tactics for fulfilling these elements of the vision. Rather, this is a glimpse into the future and a separate uh, step will be identifying the specific tactics to get there. And so in that regard, I believe one of the things that the board should consider doing is prioritizing. There, there are a series of goals. What are the, the tactics or action steps to get to each of those goals and what are the priorities among those goals? And, and again, some of the programs that we're doing, the, the efforts to get cutting edge technology and equipment into the hands of high schools and, and kids it's obvious that that's, that's a wonderful thing that we're able to do, and it's obvious that that's one of the ways that you build into the future by uh, uh, giving kids the opportunity to learn this stuff and have that equipment in hand. But there are clearly a number of very specific action steps to get there, and some of that was touched on here at the 10,000 foot level, but I do think that the next step, and I think the committee agrees that the next step for this board is, to digest this glimpse into the future and then set out the priorities and the action steps or uh, uh, tactics to achieve those priorities. And hopefully uh, the strategic plan that we've presented to the board will give uh, the board a head start in that effort. And if I can just add one thing, um, we do have a uh, um, retreat scheduled for October and I think this will be the subject of, of yep. work at that retreat. So hopefully that's our opportunity to start building on this and moving forward. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much uh, to uh, the members of the committee for the presentation. Do we have any uh, comments, questions from the board? Looks like Director no Hall. questions. Just uh, want to thank all of you. Uh, <clears throat> I've been somewhat disabled for the last week or so, so I've read every word of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it took. <laughs> And I was really amazed at the work and thought that went into it. So first of all, thank you. And second of all, I remember reading something similar to this that was developed as to how this organization survived. And it was done at a different time and a different place. And I think it is important we look beyond because we have survived. And that's due to a lot of work of the volunteers and everybody else on the board and in the community to a certain degree. So I think it's a great thing to put it on. We start thinking about it. Um, and um, then we just work from there one step at a time. But uh, it was a very comprehensive document. It was well written, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, my first question is who typed it all up? <laughs> <laughs> Tom and Nathan and Steve. <laughs> yeah, so, anyhow, thank you so much for your work on this. Yes. I would just like to reiterate that as a new board member, um, I really found it very helpful some of the background and explaining some of the, the differences between. I knew some of it about the capital monies and the unrestricted things um, and the operating and the, the challenge. And I mean, a straight through conversion is a great idea and um, finding other sources of revenue in order to operate the organization. But I thought it was very thorough, well put together, and I really appreciate it. And it'll be you know, good to work on you know, how to implement some of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. Um, anything else, Director Land? Yeah, thank you very um, much. I just have a few things. Um, I uh, mentioned the candidate statements. Uh, I know. I don't know if it was the past city council election, but I know the one previously. I was not familiar with a lot of the candidates, and I think it was one of our producers right. who took it under. Um, you know, took took it upon themselves to produce candidate statements of all the candidates, and I watched every single one of them, and yeah. it really informed me in terms of uh, <coughs> who I wanted to vote for. So. Um, looking forward, I love that idea of making sure that it happens, whether or not an individual, one of our producers, you know, if, if we as an organization can take that responsibility when it's not already um, being done by one of our members, I, I, I fully support that. Um, when you mentioned streaming alternatives, uh, Keith, I'm assuming um, like one of those would be like on demand, like being able to play programs that are scheduled in the rotation of community TV on demand. Um, without having to go through YouTube and deal with ads and, and all the suggestions that YouTube uh, as becomes more and more cluttered and, 
and uh, obnoxious, uh, so to speak. Um, I, I think that's a great I idea, and I'd, I'd love to see that happen. Um, um, automation, I think, is a great thing. Of course, almost every one of those items, I was thinking, is that going to be, uh, is that going to fall on Keith? Uh, <laughs> Well, that's so, one of our challenges. One yeah. of our challenges is, is to how to spread the load. I'm glad to hear that um, Phil is helping with maintenance currently. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, David Goldman. Getting, sorry? And David, David, Goldman. David Goldman. David Goldman. So, I mean, uh, you know, automation is great, and hopefully we can spread the load uh, and find a number of people to, uh, to undertake that. Um, um, in terms of, yeah, training, I mean, I just got in the mail today the Santa Cruz County Parks Guide for fall classes and, and um, I was talking to a, um, a member who called when community TV used to have summer camps for youth uh, um, so that was a lot of work a lot, right oh, yeah. so I mean I, I definitely want to see that happen I'd love to see community TV classes listed in the summer parks guide and, and um, you know because those are getting mailed to every household in in the city or the county and and um, a lot of eyes, you know, eyes fall on that, and we could get a lot of young people in here. You know, of course, the challenge is uh, finding the resources to do that, right? Um, so, um, yeah, priorities. Um, as Director Mannheim mentioned, this is going to be the focus of our, our board retreat, and uh, I'm sure we'll end up making some committees and, and um, trying to find, you know, it's, it's, it's an opportunity and a challenge to, to take this wonderful, comprehensive plan and, and implement it and make it a reality so and remember um, it's going to take time right yeah. but it is a god yeah. 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 it's a three-year plan so yeah no, I, I, I guess happen. the first step is that the board approves uh, uh, you're right so so um yeah i, I will uh, entertain a motion and a second to adopt this plan if, uh, i think I, the authors should i'd happily move that <laughs> i'll second it okay all right we have a motion by dr Mannheim, second by vice chair rand um any further discussion or comments Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Awesome. All right, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate it, Nathan. Thank, thank you for coming by. Much. Thank yeah, you, Keith. Thank you. Um, so, do we need a break? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll forge onward. <clears throat> I think we do have a break at some point. Um, we're going to watch some PSAs. But uh, the next item on the agenda is number six, um, which is the oral report of our executive director. Uh, Becca, are you ready for that? Yes, I am. I just. Uh, my computer doesn't like my password. Ah, okay, oh, we're in business. We I could loan you the hard copy. <laughs> <laughs> what? We're advancing technology. <laughs> so, um, yes, okay, so this uh, report is for June. Um, I changed the time frame I'm reporting on because because of the way the days are, the, the years are moving on, I'm reporting for two weeks when I come and talk to you. It's two weeks and into the month and it's not enough to give you a good idea. So I'm going to start now with June and I'm going to give you an update on what I know in July and then in, and uh, next in August I'll give you the whole in September. shebang. About September. Oh, that's right. No August. 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 So in September I'll be goofed up again. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll start with finances. The co-working center was in profit in June when we met, and I, I, when I gave you the report. I didn't think it was going to be. It was with, it was a little low, but by oh. the time the end of the month ended, we did it. Oh, fantastic. So yeah, that was good, and we're on profit to we're on pace to be on, in profit for July as well. And we had um, a bunch of people. Well, not a bunch, but. A few people come in and use our podcasting booth, which has been really fun. And uh, the last week, we had um, one of the founders of Netflix came in and did a podcast in wow. there. So I was very excited <laughs> about that. That's great. Anyway, uh, podcasting taking off here at, at CP. Can I ask a question? Is that audio only? Uh huh. I yeah. Think. So they go in the little room. It's a little room. I was like, how many of them were in there? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, um, it's about this, it's a, it's half a closet. There used to be a whole closet there. One half of it is an edit suite now, and the other end is the podcasting wow. booth, which is actually an audio booth. So you can right. control it by um, in the other room, in the other half of the closet, you can control it and record with um, <coughs> Pro Tools. But um, it's just a totally sonics everything, the ceiling, the door, all of it, and uh, two people can fit in there, and they've been three. Um, Ian tells me. Mm. So um, we have the real nice microphones for that and so they use some of our digital recording equipment also to record the podcast and the room. So, so it's great. 
and Ian set it up for him. They, they said, oh, they thought it was like a real studio where you just say what you want, you go there, and it'll all be there. We're sort of a DIY kind of place. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, Ian said, yeah, I, I, sure, I can do that for you, and then he did it. So it was great. So it's really exciting to see that, that part of our business sort of take a leap forward. Well, maybe a step forward. Um, under our paid services category, we um, did about 20 meetings in June, and s we'll be covering seven in July. Oh, what a good effort. Um, in, uh, we, are, we have a couple of events that we're going to be doing for our documentation, uh, documentation uh, department, and that's where we just go out and cover an event or a, a lecture or something like that. And we've got two coming up. In, uh, under staff, two of our um, technicians have departed, which is too bad. One of them's been with us for years, and I'm really sad to see him go. Mike Oliphant, he's excellent. And, uh, and another um, of our younger technicians is just graduating from school and so moving on, which happens a lot. We, we get a lot of great people from UCSC, and then they graduate and go away. And so we're looking for replacements for them now. And um, in the equipment and facilities department, we have um, we have a date <laughs> for mm -hmm. our fiber. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is what they say. Mm -hmm. This is the the uh, thing that we need to be approved. We should be approved on August twenty seventh. So I, I've had that in two emails from them. So I believe it, and um, I will find out in September if this happens. Also, a very cool thing. I'm working with a company called Video Link TV, and. Um, uh, Zach Friend tipped me off to them, and uh, they uh, he goes up to a community station, a community media station in um, uh, Mountain View to do live shots, and I was like, well, because I'm from broadcast TV, I'm like, do they have a satellite dish there, mm. and um, that's not how they do it anymore. There's a, sort of like an internet or internet mm -hmm. to satellite kind of thing. So uh, he does them for you know NBC and Fox and all kinds of networks. So he said, you know, I'd really rather that I, that I do them at your place. And I was like, well, that'd be excellent. So it took a, a long time for us to make the connection, but we finally connected, and um, I told him about the RSVP. <coughs> And uh, they have a way to do it either in the RSVP or in here. And because we have so much of the infrastructure together, it's just adding uh, basically a, an encoder and a transmitter, mm -hmm. and uh, off we go. Mm -hmm. So we might be able to, and I know we've been contacted in the past to do live, live shots, and we haven't been able to do it. So this could be another little revenue stream for us. We were contacted recently by NewsHour from PBS. Mm -hmm. So there was somebody, I think the university they wanted to interview. So the university is full of very exciting people who, who There's are much in, um, opportunity up there. I used to book people, and and they have to book them over in in yeah. or someone would come over, you know, which yeah, it raises the bar. So if it, if there were some place here, it'd be great, and yeah. and they would love it. Yeah, I, well, maybe we can go and talk to them when we get mm -hmm. this all signed up. I figure we'd go to see the speakers bureau and the and the PR folks and see if we can get. Some business here, yeah. Do we need our new internet connection to make this work, or will what we have now work with that? I don't know. They haven't been here to look at what we've got. Yeah. I'm assuming that what we have now would work, because we do video on it now, yeah. live. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it does. The fiber certainly would help. It would help. Yeah, sure. it'll make it a lot faster. And question, is, th is this a... Uh, uh, one-time equipment purchase, or is there a monthly subscription in terms well, of? Well, no, I haven't been able to s to, to okay. speak with them. I think that it's still. probably it's a share. I don't think that we'll just get all the money because they have the link. We right. just get the gear. I we see. might even have to pay for the gear. They might just put it here because they see. have the link. Mm -hmm. So we would get a part of the money, and they would get part of it. So it'd be like having a satellite truck come over and park in the, hmm. and then they would get some, and we get some. I see. Yeah, but we get some, which is great. Yeah, right. <laughs> like the room is just <laughs> there, empty right now. Uh, moving on to communications, um, we have been doing First Fridays, as you know, and we did one in uh, June, and in August we're having Bri um, Brian Garrison photography. We kept the June up um, through July because it was uh, it really interesting, and there were some holidays in July, so we didn't want to shortchange our next artist by having them only get three weeks or something. So um, we went, uh, we just kept... Uh, kept the paintings for the month and are doing another one in August. And Ian has um, been trying for a long time, Ian is our coordinator for the co-working space. He's been trying for a long time to do movie nights here. And uh, 
he's finally got it all lined up. So we're doing, uh, on July 26th, we'll have Manos, the Hand of Fate, mm. which is a, a apparently a classic film I've never heard of, but it is in, in, it. Yeah, in film <laughs> filmmakers <laughs> areas. It's really, really popular, and uh, but it happens to be public domain. So we're able to show it here. And um, that's going to be real exciting. And Ian also went up to the university film department this month to talk to them about um, not only showing their films here on oh, his movie night, films. but putting them on a channel. Right. So oh, we've been up and talked to them before, but he's a graduate from there, and he knows everybody mm -hmm. in that department. So I think we might get some traction. Some of the student really films are great. Happy. Yeah, I would yeah. love to have they, student they films. They put them on uh, KQED. So yeah, we have. Yeah, it was um, um, so sc school film shorts. It was. Yeah. Film school shorts, yeah, mm -hmm. it was a fun, a fun project they put together. We thought maybe it would only go for a year, but it continues today. So good project, and we can do the same thing here with our our local filmmakers. So that's my report for um, June. I was off two weeks in June, so mm -hmm. not not a lot happened. Well, thank you, Becca. That's, a, that's some yeah, exciting, exciting news. Exciting. Yeah. Any uh, comments, questions? Can I ask a question for Maya? Certainly. <laughs> so you mentioned the the podcasting. Yeah. I noticed uh, as a member of Santa Cruz Works that there's uh, going to be a podcasting class here. Yeah. Do you have some information you could let the public know about that? I don't. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, Stay tuned. It's still, Stay tuned. It's still in the works. Okay. So I'm not sure who's teaching it or when it's going to happen. It's a partnership between uh, the two of us. Yeah. And as soon as we know something, we'll put it more on the website. Fantastic. Great. Well, it's good to know that's coming up. All right. Well, thank you very much, Becca. Um, we can move on next. Oh, uh, well, the next item is uh, um, capital expenditure to authorize um, Becca to make an equipment purchase from Elemental Technologies in the amount of 25319 and some odd uh, cents. Uh, would you uh, sure. kindly uh, let us know what that's all about? Yeah, yeah. Well, it is a big piece of equipment. The Elemental is pretty much like the TV station part of our TV station. and. Um, um, those things don't last um, forever, and they and the technology keeps advancing, and so uh, they usually cost about fifty thousand dollars. Right now, they've just done a big advance, and they don't want to provide support for the old one, so they're giving us fifty percent off if we will move up to the new one now. So we could wait two years and pay fifty thousand dollars, or we could buy it now for twenty five. So I think it's a good idea, and Victor thinks it's a good idea and um, it's you know it's good for everybody it'll be worth it it would be hard to run the elemental without support we get we have occasionally needed support for it mm. well it aligns with what's in the strategic plan about yeah. having the, the latest, latest and, latest and the greatest right. so yeah yeah it seems like we want to move up it does extra things I don't understand what they <laughs> are <laughs> but there but Victor assures me it's worth a move up so you need some training <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, do, do they provide training with the equipment? They do. They so they'll walk you through stuff. They're really good. I like the guys from Elemental. They're really helpful. One time we had a issue when we were trying to caption, and they figured it out. We thought it was some other piece of equipment. We finally asked them, and they worked it out for us. So they and they don't charge us for support, which and is really good. And it's the same vendor, so I'm assuming the interface is at least somewhat similar, if, if they, unless they totally revamped it. So yeah, I don't think uh, there'll be a big nightmare changeover, but right. if there is, we'll do it at 2 in the morning or something. Right. I guess that would mean you would have to be up at 2 in the morning to let us in that room. I you? guess so, somebody, <laughs> somebody <laughs> or the on-call person, yeah. Um, we, we'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah. Uh, as because the equipment is at the... The equipment's in, in, in the, the county building. Center in the county yeah, building. and we can't go into that section of the building without an escort. We have law enforcement data there, and so uh, we, you know, people have to sign things, get fingerprinted, and um, have Sieges training and such. To well, we're happy to do that. Yeah. Right. I, I would be happy to well, do that maybe, for Victor. Maybe when we um, have our meeting with uh, the county, um, we can discuss yeah, we that, bring that up. as a, an agenda item. Yeah, yeah. If there's just um, a procedure and that's all it is, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm ready to make a motion. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll just, as a video geek, I noticed on that thing that um, the new uh, uh, Elemental uses uh, HEVC, high efficiency video coding, which is H.265. It's been H.264 for the longest Ever. time, and this is the latest, greatest um, video encoding technology. Just supposedly even more, and it allows for 8K You are definitely a, a geek. <laughs> <laughs> I can't describe to the, the actual coding mechanisms and the, the number of squares that it breaks into, but um, 
Uh, one of these, when I retire, I'd like to go through and read all those specifications. <laughs> and, 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 and <laughs> well, I've been changed. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll be 66. H266. Right. 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 Maybe there'll be an audio book. But uh, I will entertain a motion. Okay, and I suggest you second it since you're the most knowledgeable of this. <laughs> Am I allowed to second a motion? Yes, yes you can't yeah. make it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, uh, I move to authorize the executive director to make equipment purchase from Elemental Technologies in the amount of $25,319.25. I'm going to round that up a little, uh, or there. In case there's tax or shipping. If there's some kind of change in shipping costs shipping. like that. Yeah, so uh, I'll just say in an amount generally $25,500. I will second that motion. Uh, I'd like to move an amendment. If taxes aren't included. Uh, as a nonprofit, do we pay taxes? Of course oh, we do because we don't yeah. resell them. Gotta yeah. make it thirty. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and we, we always say not, not to exceed. Not to exceed thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that'll work. Um, oh, they are. It looks. It sits nope. in here. I no, think. There's no taxes. Yeah. Uh, I don't see taxes. No, no it's not. not. I thought yeah. I saw some thirty yeah. percent. That's a well. Reduction. They may think yeah. they're not going to tax us because we're a nonprofit, but we do pay the tax. So eventually, so Mel will pay it anyway. I'll accept that as a friendly second. Or friendly amendment. 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 Uh, as the second, I uh, accept okay. that as well. All right, so we have a, a motion from Director Hall, second from Chair Maziars. Um, any further discussion, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries unanimously. Um, all right, so um, we move on to item number eight. Uh, we've already discussed a lot, so uh, do you have anything to add? I don't have to much that? to uh, add. I, I just I, I mentioned briefly the group of people that has been working on. Uh, increasing the support for uh, for new producers and we're actually going to have a meeting uh, it looks like the beginning of August with the volunteer advisory committee to discuss their upgraded plan and uh, I was wondering if it would be okay if uh, we get this plan to uh, the members of the volunteer advisory committee so that they can review and maybe have some input and some ideas and Maybe digesting it a little bit. Sure. sure. I mean, it's, yeah, it's on our website currently. Yeah. Um, actually, I forgot one comment I had for the committee mm -hmm. is that um, it's a wonderful, wonderful plan. All it needs is a nice wrapper. You know, that if you saw the county strategic uh, plan, it, was, it had this beautiful cover that was designed by a graphic artist and had pictures and. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so we, so we uh, you all put have so high much hats <laughs> and dancing and all that. Like put so much work. You put so much work into that. Uh, uh, I, a nice cover would well, we'll need another volunteer for that. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. But no, I, I think he's volunteer. Am I? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, so that's the plan for the next meeting. And but so we're kind of you know side by side, thinking along the same lines. Although I think they're going to be so pleased with the strategic plan. Mm. So well, since we're going to be turning to them for yeah. a lot of these, <laughs> I a lot of the um, actions that to be taken. I think that would probably be very worthwhile yeah. to um, so that is basically uh, my report great thank you um, I know the CG person will hate me for this but I think uh, if we could jump to item number 10 oral report of the board chair I uh, don't have much uh, we've been working on scheduling a meeting with the county um, and hopefully that will be um, nailed down uh, later this week and uh, what else uh, we scheduled the uh, board retreat um, so okay. that's that's all I have. Oh, I want, want to say happy birthday to my son. Yeah, he turned 19 yesterday. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I consider that an accomplishment, getting him that far. Um, you mean his accomplishment? Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kept him from running into, into the street a few times along the way. Just leave it in happy birthday. In front of cars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and with that, um, apologies to the CG person, um, maybe we can move back to item number nine which is to view some sample public service announcements. I forget who asked, maybe it was, it was me. Oh, you asked, uh, yeah, since we do these all the time, um, it would be nice to actually see some of these samples. Um, I don't know uh, how much, t uh, anyways, we have a number of samples queued up. Um, so if we are, they're ready in the control room, maybe we can. I was just say, my understanding is there have 10 or 12. I don't think we want to see all of them. <laughs> yeah, there the, are was, the question was, do we see bits and pieces of 10 or 12, or do we watch one or two of them all the way through? Huh? How about we play PSA roulette? Uh, <laughs> so if, if you're ready, um, kindly go ahead and roll some PSAs, and we'll get out the popcorn. 
Hi, I'm Michael from the Santa Cruz Middle and Gem Society. We're an all-volunteer nonprofit active in Santa Cruz since 1949. I wanted to tell you about our holiday sale November 17th and 18th at the Live Oak Grange on 17th Avenue in Santa Cruz. Members and friends of the club will be selling their lapidary arts and natural treasures, including gems, jewelry, beads, rocks, minerals, and fossils. The sale at the Grange will be open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on both Saturday and Sunday, the 17th and 18th. Drop by, do some holiday shopping, and check off your gift list for that special someone. Browse the gift items or take a spin at the treasure wheel. Kids love the treasure wheel. Admission is free and there's plenty of free parking. That's November 17th and 18th, 10 to 5, at the Live Oak Grange on 17th Avenue in Santa Cruz. Hope to see you at the sale. Hello, I'm Barbara Chamberlain from the Cabrillo Host Lions Club. Lions are dedicated to helping the local community. We provide scholarships, speech contests, youth sports. We volunteer vision services, glasses, and surgeries. This year, Lions have tested children in all of the local schools. Through the Lions... Hi, I'm Justin Wright, the volunteer coordinator at Homeless Garden Project. On our organic farm, the Homeless Garden Project provides job training, transitional employment, and support services to people who are experiencing homelessness. In the fall and winter months, our team makes great gift products. Did you know that 2.4 million STEM jobs will go unfilled in the U.S. this year? The Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Libraries ask you to close that gap with a gift today. And have you heard the phrase, open door, open heart? The Santa Cruz County Animal Shelter is the only open admission shelter in the county, which means... Fright and runaways are a frequent side effect of noisy 4th of July celebrations. Every year, fireworks cause an alarming uptick in lost pets. It's important for people to know how to help a lost animal. Unfortunately, the internet offers confusing and inaccurate advice, and many good Samaritans turn to the Santa Cruz SPCA, simply on the strength of name recognition. The SPCA... Hi, I'm Rod, and I'm a Rotarian. Statistically, you could be forgiven for thinking that what you just heard was the first step of a 12-step program. That's to say that most people have little or no knowledge of what a Rotarian is or what one does. For those who've never heard of Rotary, a Rotarian could easily be presumed to be a mysterious, amorphous being from the planet Rotar. And for those who have a vague notion of what Rotary might be, they invariably assume that a Rotarian is an old, rich, white guy who wears a badge and writes fat checks over long martini lunches. In other words, a Rotarian is a dinosaur. So there you have it. For most of the general public, a Rotarian is perceived to be either an alien or a dinosaur. Well, I'm happy to report that neither of those descriptions has much to do with Rotary in general and nothing to do with local Rotarians in particular. In a nutshell, Rotarians are a group of really active and passionate community leaders who volunteer to do community service and who raise money to support others. We love to get together and have a great time, and we do so in a way that truly makes a difference in our local communities and the broader global community. Okay, I hear you say that that all sounds very good, but when you scale The volunteer filming period. Right? Yes. And it looks like that same piece of music has gotten used uh, a number of times. It's very peppy and. But it's messy. spread out over all the hours, so nobody will remember. Right, right, no, no. <laughs> great. Well, that was a, uh, thank you, uh, Director Hall. That was a well, great I was, idea. I've seen them once in a while when I'm kind of surfing through community TV, and some of them, my wife came in and watched one, and we had a great chuckle on it, and some of them were really good. Yeah. I mean, they're all interesting, and I think it's a, a good way to end the strategic plan of how we connect with our community. Well, you see it's so enthusiastic. Yeah. That's the one thing yeah. across that board is everyone is <laughs> yeah. really enthusiastic about what they're doing. So. Yeah. yeah, it's a great way for people who are doing things in the community to get the word out, and mm -hmm. people in the community to learn about things. Maybe we need a uh, PSA award ceremony <laughs> <laughs> to recognize excellence in, in PSAs. Um, great. All right. Any further comments on that? Thank you very much, uh, Director Hall, for yeah, bringing that to us. Um, thank everybody, the volunteers, for putting that together. Right. Yeah. Hope they and those are done monthly? Is that right? No, no. I just 
Oh, no, they, they, you, don't, you, you don't do the PSAs, is it once a month? PSA days? Once a month. It's the second Friday of every month. Okay. Yeah. Please so get the form filled out and the information in early. Okay, okay. so if anybody's <laughs> watching this and they want to make their own PSA, go, go to, to communitytv.org and uh, look for the PSA item. Great. All right, so we can move on to um, item number 11, board member staff request for specific items um, to appear on the next meeting agenda. Do we have any... That's going to be uh, September, since we don't meet in August. I don't see any. So um, we move on to number 12, which is announcements. Um, I would like to thank our all-volunteer crew um, today. Uh, that consists of Linda Janakis, John James, Karen Scott, Phil Harmonic, Nick Kirkendall, and Sherry Ross. Thank you all very much for staying. This is a longer meeting than usual. And um, do you get volunteer credits based on... Uh, yeah. So you get more volunteer credits. Um, so thank you very much. Um, so we can move on to item number 13, which is adjournment. Do we have a motion for adjournment? We have a motion. We have a so motion adjourn. and a second. All second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Carries unanimously. Unanimously. Thank you very much. <laughs> have a good evening. <laughs>